guys. Welcome back to Tandem Fandom's Cruiserweight Classic Coverage. I'm Courtney. And I'm Mick. And today we're going over the second round of first round fights. That's right. This was a little bit uh, smaller on the known star power side, at least right. for up and comers. You know, in the first round we got to see Cedric Alexander and Kota Ibushi, who are you know pretty big names on yeah, the on the independent bigger. circuit. Uh, we had a legacy with what's his name's younger brother. Oh yeah, Arya Davari, uh, who nah, is Davari's really, younger brother. Doesn't um, really count as legacy. I but mean, we did see who is. Um, I don't want to say legendary cruiserweight, but a uh, pretty big name uh, in terms of having worked for WWE, having worked for ECW extensively in Japan with Tajiri, uh, TJ Perkins, uh, no, uh, the former uh, Manic for TNA, so he worked under a mask. Uh, Akira Tozawa is a pretty big name for Dragon Gate. Uh, Lince Dorado is an up-and-coming luchador. Um, but like Damian Slater, uh, Demac, uh, Mustafa Ali, uh, Kenneth Johnson, yeah. didn't really know much about these guys. Pretty like, much brand new to the scene. Yeah. Which well, is good. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> definitely good. And I think that's the, the coolest thing about the Cruiserweight Classic is it's shining a light and exposing us to talent that we might not necessarily see. And, you know, as we go through the matches, you know, some were better than others and some talent, you know, was shining brighter than others, but I feel like everybody that we've seen thus far, there's potential there. Maybe not like, this guy's a future Hall of Fame, ch not that necessarily, right. but the, the ability to be a consistent uh, worker and performer in the business is there for all of these guys, so yeah, it was entertaining to say the least. It's definitely been an enter entertaining. Uh, we kick off this week with uh, Tajiri versus Damian Slater. Tajiri, of Australian yep, fame. Tajiri representing Japan. Uh, this was a really interesting match because, like I said, wasn't very familiar with Damian Slater, but he was kind of jacked up. Right? <laughs> yeah, he was, he was a physical specimen. Yeah, he, uh, he, he kind of played the, the cocky, you know, arrogant heel thing a little bit well. It was really toned down, and that's something that I've noticed for a lot of these matches is they were, they're very toned in terms of baby face or heel. Like, there's yeah. nobody that's really cranked up and, like, overtly cheating or, like, right. you know, to the crowd or something. We yeah. haven't really seen that. This just isn't the stage for that, I don't yeah. think. There's just, it's really just been, like, this guy's a little disrespectful. And right. that's kind of been it. But it's a, a welcome change and a, a breath of fresh air in terms of you know, we see every week on WWE, and even for NXT to an extent, you know, very large characters over the top, like you know, Chris Jericho, as great as he is, you know, he's sitting there, you stupid idiot, like every week. So seeing like more of a sports style, like this guy's yes. just cocky and a little disrespectful is, is kind of a, an interesting change. Yeah, more focused on the wrestling. It's got fantastic commentary. I like learning about these guys. Mm. Uh, they give them bo they give them each a little uh, off camera promo time, yeah. like the kind of building up their story, where they're from, why they're wrestling. You know, I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's it's really cool, and you know, like with Tajiri, he's somebody that we know. He's familiar. He he looked great. You know, for a guy to for his age, he he looked fantastic. Yeah, obviously one of the older people in this tournament. Definitely. Um, I'm, I'm also interested to see how, like, Brian Kendrick is going to look because, yeah. you know, he, being around for so long, also having WWE experience, I'm interested to see how that plays out. But Tajiri, it was a great match, you know. Damien Slater, at least compared to Tajiri, uh, it was a little obvious. He was a little younger, a little newer at this. Yeah. But uh, I think it was a good pairing with Tajiri because... It was a it was an entertaining match. It's really yeah, solid. Yeah, Tajiri worked well with the newer guy. Yeah, and, and I think that was probably the goal. I will say I was very disappointed that there was no uh, green mist that Tajiri used. He, he <laughs> uh, used to do that a lot. He would spit the green mist into the face of his opponent. So yeah. I kind of <laughs> hate that that didn't happen. Or the uh, the one time he spit the black mist that he tried to spit into Jamie Noble's face, and Jamie uh, either moved or you know he pushed Nydia in the way, one thing, and that led to Nydia being blind for a while. Oh, so that was uh, 
It's just like one of my favorite things about Tajiri is him that stupid mist, but you know, you got all your classic. Was it, was it like poison? That's. I, I guess. I don't know. Like, it was the. It was, oh, it's the black mist. And it's like, what the hell is this? Because, you know, he did green pretty regularly. I think he did red once or twice, but the black mist blinded her. That's intense. It's pretty great. <laughs> um, uh, you know, but you got all the classic Tajiri spots, you know, he did the uh, the handspring elbow, he did the buzzsaw kick, the tarantula, which got a pretty big pop. Um, he was great. Slater was good, too. I enjoyed him. I, I'm, I hope they give him an opportunity uh, in NXT or something. Yeah, that's what I really like about this whole Cruiserweight Classic, is if you lose, it's not necessarily the end of the road. Mm. It's really a showcase yeah. of these, you know, of these unknowns and lesser knowns. Yeah. It, it's a good, it's an exhibition, yeah. but there is going to be a reason to win, yeah. or to want to win. Definitely. So Tajiri picked up the win. Yep, he be goes on to face Grand Metallic. In very excited round. for that. I'm really excited for that match. I think that'll be really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, like, are they going to push Grand Metallic more? Are they just using Tajiri as... Something it, to push these younger guys with, yeah. or is Tajiri a legitimate contender for the number one spot? Like it's, I feel like it's kind of strange that they're using older talents that have been in the business in the well, WWE brand yeah. even in this tournament. But it being the best cruiserweights from around the world, these guys do fall under that umbrella. But I just I don't know what the end game is using these. I think more established it, men. I think it's name recognition. You yeah. know, most average viewers, and, and maybe if they're not like a new viewer, like if you've only started watching the past few years, you probably don't know who Tajiri is. But if you were watching in the early 2000s, or if you watched like even when Tajiri was in ECW, you're aware of who he was. Because, like I said, he was never like a huge star in America, but you would be aware of who he is. You know, right. he's teaming with William Regal. You know, he had kind of his weird, like, Yakuza stable for a minute um, on SmackDown. Yeah. So, yes, I believe he was Cruiserweight Champion. He was a tag champion. So, he's not, like, like I said, he's not a huge name. He's not Rey Mysterio in the tournament right. or, or something along those That's lines. That's true. But he's somebody who he can still work. Like we said, great match. Can yeah. still go. Uh is entertaining, um, got the nice pop for the tarantula, so I think that's it. I, I don't anticipate him going very far. I, yeah. I think he's there to put over um, younger and talent that they want to spotlight more like Grand Metallic, who is rumored to have been signed uh, to, to a deal. So yeah. I think that's the idea. So you got to think, if six months from now we're watching Grand Metallic on like Raw or, you know, SmackDown or NXT, they can say he beat Tajiri, former WWE superstar Tajiri in the Cruiserweight Classic, as opposed to he beat uh, Jay Brone in the Cruiserweight <laughs> Classic, you know? Right. So yeah, I think that, that's, that's the idea. Yeah. Now, I will say, I say that about Tajiri, I don't know why, I feel like Kendrick is the opposite. I feel like they yeah. want to take Kendrick a little further. Well... He went on for more. Maybe that's than, me hoping they take Kendrick a little further, but he went on for more of like an indie circuit. Kind yeah. Of run. Anyway. And his history and with uh, Daniel Bryan and and they really tried to. He was I mean one of, before the New Day did it. He was one of the longest reigning tag champ. He was the longest reigning tag champions. One half of them um, with Paul London. You know they tried to give him that big singles push where they teamed him on you know SmackDown with Ezekiel Jackson and he was the Brian Kendrick. And yeah, he was, I was gonna say he's not just any Brian Kendrick. He is the, the Brian, Brian Kendrick. Kendrick. Well, I don't know if you know, but Daniel Bryan was originally supposed to debut in the WWE because the Brian Kendrick was looking for the tag team partner. So he was going to be Kendrick's tag partner originally. Huh. That was the original uh, debut that they were going to do for him. But uh, obviously things change, but you know, he's trained with Shawn Michaels, has been a multi-time champion, is insanely gifted in the ring. I don't know if they anticipate calling him back up to the main roster or Man. if it's we're going to help you or utilize you in like a coaching type thing. Cause he's yeah. done guest coaching a couple times for them. That's, 
she she's never spoken of highly on this show, but even Marie trained with Brian Kendrick. That's why her finish is what it is, the sliced red. It's the sliced bread number two. <laughs> you know. Sorry, I didn't know what it was called. Yeah, I think that's, that's what they call it. It's like the sliced red or some, some stupid shit. But um, that's why she does it, because she trained with Kendrick at his gym and his training facility that or his school that he has so well, that's she must not have retained any of it well i mean shit not everybody's no she didn't she's terrible <laughs> she's awful <laughs> moving on to the second match moving uh, on tj perkins and demac who could wrestle circles around even even marie yes uh tj perkins representing <laughs> no offense to <Demac. laughs> uh representing the philippines and uh f coming out of los angeles i think they said yeah yep yep Demac of uh, Germany, or the... The Urban German. He is already coming up with a nickname. Also, the Michael Jackson of wrestling. I gotta, I gotta throw a flag on the play on that. <laughs> uh, what exactly made him the Michael Jackson of wrestling? Because, yeah, he... Okay, he did the moonwalk. He can moonwalk. Lots of people so do the damn... Carmella. Moon. Carmella moonwalks. <laughs> Michael Hayes moonwalks. Like, that doesn't make you the Michael Jackson. When he said that, I... And maybe well, <laughs> wrongly so. I got excited because I was like, oh shit, he's going to go out and like do like the Thriller thing. Or, 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 or what was it? Was it Thriller or was it Bad? Where was he? Uh, I don't remember. I was like, well, maybe he'll like the sidewalk will light up when he walks. I yeah. Mean. <laughs> maybe he'll do that or he'll do the like lean, lean thing and drop an elbow. Or maybe he'll oh, like kind of pop, so cool. pop and lock, like do the kick out. The, ah! Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, or the... You know, something like that. And but he, no, he just kind of moonwalked a yeah. little. I mean, he, he had really good charisma, and yeah. I feel like he put too much into the idea of being the Michael Jackson of wrestling rather than actually wrestling. Yeah. So it was, I mean, he was okay. TJ Perkins was obviously better. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, I don't, you know, no disrespect to the Mac. I've not seen a lot of his work. It's my first experience to him. Right. But I felt... That this was a uh, severe mismatch in terms of um, a matchup because TJ Perkins was super strong. He looked more like the Michael Jackson of wrestling <laughs> with his movements, you know, and he did like dab and he was right, you know, <laughs> pop locking. Dab and boo. I mean, he was doing all sorts of stuff like that, so I feel like he shined a lot brighter than Demac, which. You know, TJ won the match, so maybe that's kind of the intention, yeah. you know. But uh, I will say this. I was intrigued by by uh, Demac. I would like to see him again. Yeah. Just maybe. to kind of see, like, okay, what else does he have? So he didn't yeah, maybe he develop didn't intrigue a little bit me. more. He did it's, intrigue me. But some, I, some guys, especially newer guys they really focus more on their character and their gimmick rather than their in-ring performance. Yeah. And sometimes that shows, like the uh, the Curse of Greatness. I don't even remember his name from NXT. Was that? The Curse of Greatness. He's got the two headbands with the singlet. That's oh, the yeah. I was like, who are you talking about? Exactly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He's only been on NXT a couple, a handful of times, maybe just once. Angelo or Dawkins, twice. maybe. That sounds right. Okay, yeah. But um, I feel like he put way, he put way more focus into the curse of greatness and having this look. Yeah. But he's the shits in the ring. Well, and. Uh, and I'm like, what is what is the curse of greatness that you can't wrestle? Yeah. But you're well, great. Well, uh, in in fairness as well to to Demac, you know because. We, we try and remain relatively positive because I don't ever want to disrespect somebody who has the balls to step in that ring and put their health at risk for my entertainment. So I'm not really going to, like, shit on anybody unless your name's Eva Marie. Um, so, uh, you know, it the European style is very different. That's than, true. There's not a, lot of, not, not a lot of guys coming out of Germany except for um, Wolf. Uh, yeah, Alexander Wolf, which I believe he was an athlete. Not necessarily a indie wrestler. It seems like he's hitting in stride with his new tag team, but we haven't. Yeah, uh, but th that being said, like one, the that style's a little bit different. So maybe it was like a slight clash of style because I think they said Demac had a high flying style, and it didn't really look like he did. Like yeah. he, I think he did maybe one or two like high flying type spots. Um, T.J. Perkins having worked for TNA, having done the American scene for so long, but especially. Working TNA, 
he knows how to work for an American crowd better. He knows. Right. Um, it's weird to say, I know where the camera is. I know where my money shots are. I right. know what I need to do in terms of selling my brand and getting over with this kind of a crowd. So Because I did get that kind of feeling. I was like... It was almost like Demac felt a little uncomfortable, or like he something yeah. it, 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 again maybe just, intrigued, but something felt off. Maybe just inexperienced, especially with a stranger, because a lot of times when you're going yeah. into any promotions, you you know these guys, or you've worked with them before, or you know you're you're in the scene together, so you're aware of each other. I'm sure he probably never even seen had never even seen T.J. Perkins's face much less worked with him in the ring. Yeah. So. But it was a solid match. I mean, he put forth a good effort. I would like to see him work some more just because, I, you know, he is different. And like you said, yeah. there isn't a lot of talent um, coming out of Germany. So I think that would be a good thing to, uh, to add to NXT. That's something I'd really like to see them do is adding more uh, talent from, you know, Europe. And, you know, especially, like places that we don't often see a lot of independent right. wrestling from. I think that's one thing that makes Cesaro so great is with him being Swiss. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of Swiss talent. So, you know, more talent from, like, Germany, from Belgium, from Denmark, from uh, Italy, from yeah. Spain. Like, I, I think it would be cool just to give more of an international flavor to the brand. Okay? Yeah. I think that would be really cool. So, Mustafa Ali, mm -hmm. uh, representing Pakistan, against the Golden Lynx, Lindsay Dorado, <laughs> representing Port... I don't know why it was Golden Truth. Representing <laughs> Puerto Rico. Golden Lynx, what's up? What the? But yeah, Lindsay Dorado from Puerto Rico. I've... I love luchadors. What can I say? I was. Super I love his mask. His <laughs> mask is. Well, it's, I love the teeth. I love the the backwards ears. I love the fur mohawk. I love everything about it. <laughs> <laughs> and. I, you know, I was excited. I want to see him move on, just like Grand Metallic. But Mustafa Ali was really good. He was. <laughs> uh, I was impressed. He. There were a few moments where I was like, "Oh shit, is Lindsay like Dorado gonna lose?" Right. Just looking at it, I. I hate to say it because the cool thing about this is we don't know who's gonna win. Exactly. But looking at it on paper, you would think Lindsay Dorado would be the one to advance with his. Uh, his look, being a, uh, a luchador, that yeah. is... A high, high flying, exciting, looks good on TV. Yeah, so you would think, but there are a few moments where I was like... Yeah, there were a lot Whoa. of close uh, two counts. So yeah. That, I think that was the most exciting match of this, of this segment. I agree. I, I agree. It was, a, it was a really fun match. Um, and I, I enjoyed the finish because uh, Dorado got the win after um, Ali messed up on a, not messed up, but missed on a awesome imploding, like, yeah. I don't want to, it was a, 450? was it a 450? Okay, yeah, it was, it was cool, though, was and really he missed, cool. I'd and, never seen that before. and Lindsay hits the ropes, he hits a beautiful shooting star press, I mean, it was, uh, let's see if I can, <laughs> better than um, the heaven board. Yeah, it was, uh, it was not, I well, uh, okay. hold on, on par with Evan, hey, Evan <laughs> Airborne, Matt Seidel. Side yeah. side all? Peace. The the really pretty guy that goes like this. God. <laughs> if I swear to God, I have to hear about this all the time. Every time I watch Ring of Honor. There he he's is. He's so cute. <sighs> I mean, he, he is. <laughs> Look him up. Oh my gosh. He's all right. <laughs> so it was a good match. Um, uh, so our next match, uh, Akira Tozawa representing Japan against... The only, well, as I'm looking at it, the only American, or well, I guess <laughs> TJ was American, but representing the Philippines, but representing USA from Detroit, Michigan, Kenneth Johnson. Woo! I did like the little bit of backstory that they told about Kenneth, yeah. about him uh, overcoming his stutter. Yeah. And how he was like sweeping floors, and then he would um, like walk five miles to go train to be a wrestler with uh, Mr. Hughes. Um, that was awesome. Yeah, and listening to Daniel Bryan talk about yeah. that, you know, because he's so passionate, especially about like underdog guys and other guys who are so passionate yeah. about the business that they literally just interrupt their lives to make wrestling their lives. Yeah. And it was, it was. 
that heartfelt goodness. It was, it was cool. Tozawa, of course, like I said, a a Dragon Gate veteran, uh, very very close friends with um, Apollo Cruz, Ricochet, uh, Rich Swan. Like he's really close with them. So much so that I saw a after this uh, this match i i was on twitter the next day and i saw somebody shared i meant to show you this i completely <laughs> forgot um there is a gif of him holding this is when uh cruz was on the indies and he was still the uha nation was uh -huh. holding like his trunks and he's like these are uha's trunks and then the next part <laughs> of the gif is him Pulling the trunks over his head, and it says "muffled screaming." <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what the context was, but seeing that, because he was like, ah! <laughs> like, it was hysterical. Oh so my goodness. I badly want to know the con the context of him doing that. Just that just sounds like some ridiculous hentai joke. <laughs> it probably was. It's Apollo's pantsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Apollo's pantsuit got me. So Apollo Chan pantsuit. <laughs> but back to the match. This was a pretty solid match. Um, yes. Yeah, so Tozawa <laughs> had uh, had a pretty cool style, I think. Uh, See now, Kenneth Johnson. He was obviously greener. Yes, know? I will. Yeah. He, he you know kind of liked a Mac, but I just feel like I feel like Kenneth had a little bit more zip. Uh, I can't think of the term. He just, he was a little more into the moves and the reactions. Hmm. And... The character wasn't there. Uh, no, he hadn't, I mean... He was know. Kenneth Johnson, professional wrestler from Detroit, Michigan. That's who he was. But At least Demack had the, I'm the Michael Jackson of wrestling, I'm the urban German. Like, he's got a little more zazz. Kenneth, it was just... Well, yeah, that that could be that could be his character. It could I be, mean, you know, young guy from Detroit, war torn Detroit, just Fair point. trying to. We got a RoboCop statue. Your move, creep. <laughs> RoboCop, the first documentary to be made before it actually happens. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't but know. He, I, he, I, I feel like he had it. Hmm kind of behind, you know, everything, the inexperience in the ring, but... I can see that. Being so, as, sorry, being as new and green as he is, yeah. he did really well against uh, uh, Tozawa. Tozawa, I think, was probably the guy that shined the most to me on this entire episode. Um, it's really close with TJ Perkins, like, because TJ had, he had that swag, son. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> but um, Tazawa to me, I loved his intensity, the screaming and the ah, like that. Very Oscar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really was. I think you said that too during the match. You were like, he's like a male Oscar, and um, I, I liked that. I love that intensity. I love that different element where, like, especially with the way they are kind of treating Cruiserweight Classic, where it's more fight style and more, you know, of an athletic contest as opposed right. to a show. I. It's an element we need. We need that guy that doesn't... The, the he's just this intense and just, you know, like, ah, I'm here, I'm going to kick your ass. And yeah. uh, wasn't like crazy strong style, I don't think. He was more uh, technical grounded, it, it felt, which was, I, I think, a nice contrast from what we saw with, like, Ibushi, who was strong style right. and high flying. But it was good. It's a good match. Uh, like I said, Kent Johnson, super green. Super Clearly, green. Clearly, this... Uh, Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, shit, he could be. He's like, hey, guys, uh, I'm like a 12-year Ring of Honor veteran. Have you never heard of me? If he was, I didn't see it. That's not a knock. That's just that's honesty. You know, I, I, I was intrigued by his story. Yeah. And that's where I think Cruiserweight Classic can really succeed. If a guy struggles with, you know, being a character or being more of a, like, flashy wrestler because there were moments where like he had some athleticism but he didn't do anything crazy you know yeah. he wasn't going out there looking like ricochet or will osprey bouncing right. all over the place but 
It was there. Well, there was a, a an exchange that him and Tozawa had early on yeah. where they both ended in like a pose. Like Tozawa ended up on his knees, and Johnson just immediately responded and was like, <laughs> well, "I was like, yeah, get it." Yeah. So, but <laughs> he, just, he was he was so excited. Yes. He was so excited to just be in the ring, and that really showed. It really kind of felt like if you said to a guy in the front row, hey, we need a guy, can you, you know, right. like, that's the impression I got. <laughs> and maybe a lot of that has to do with the commentary, which that is why I appreciate sort of work that Mauro Ranallo and Daniel Bryan are doing is yes. because they are bringing that different element and that a lot of uh, very similar to like UFC commentary where yeah. they are telling you more about the guy like you know he traveled three miles on his bike to go train kickboxing every day you know yeah. he moved from like Burkittsville Maryland yeah. to New York City so he could train with such like it's everybody, that everybody loves that Rocky Balboa kind of story. yeah so it, it's like I said it's cool and it makes me more interested in seeing Kenneth Johnson again and it had nothing to do with anything that he did in the ring it had nothing to do with any personality he showed it had to do with me looking at this guy and hearing his story about how hard he trained how hard he worked mm -hmm. he got to this point and I'm like I want to see him again because I want to see him succeed. Right. If that, I want to see him get more opportunity yeah, because knowing his story. If that's how far he's gotten without opportunity and without anything being handed to him, how far can he go with opportunity yes. in his hands? Yeah. So it's, like I said, I was not blown away by him. I wasn't like, yeah, I love this dude. I need to buy his t-shirt. ProWrestlingTees.com So, um, <laughs> we're... We don't have anything there. It's just I like plugging that place. Um, They're good people. Yeah. So, but again, it's it's the story that endears. And Perkins has the same thing where yeah. he was homeless and he did this and yeah. did, you know. So it's a little bit better than like he trained with veteran so and so. Right. He That's grew up cool. in Venice Beach and. <laughs> yeah, he grew up in Venice Beach. Had everything handed to it. Like I. That's cool for some guys. But other guys need that little extra, like, little oomph. That yeah, just look little, at how like, much I care about where I am now. Well, you know what? And, and it's one of those things where you don't need to give the guy a crazy character. And you don't need to give him a crazy backstory. Because his real story is way more yeah, interesting right. and way you're more endearing enough. than, like, okay, you're going to be the mechanic, Kenneth Johnson from Detroit. No, you can just be <laughs> yourself. And yeah. that's way more interesting. And because of the commentary... Helping me learn that story yep. is awesome. Especially when they talked about his stutter and I got to see his little pre-match promo. Yeah. There's nothing you couldn't tell. So if you didn't know, you would never know. So it's like, if that was a made-up thing, which I doubt it was, but, you know, if that was made up, it doesn't matter because I'm like, look how far he's come. <laughs> yeah. Go, Kenneth, go! So, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of... Rude. Right? <laughs> so that's kind of kind of how I felt. Uh, do you have a, a match of the night? A uh, match of the night? I'm going to have to go with Mustafa Ali and Lince Dorado. They mm. put on a barn burner. They were tit for tat on the athleticism and some of the aerial moves. It was a fantastic match. I have to agree with you. I think they take match of the night. Uh, individual performance, I give it to Tozawa. Like TJ, and honestly, I was like, say, do you? <laughs> really flip a coin. TJ Perkins or Tozawa. Those, <laughs> those are the two guys that, that um, were were the brightest for me from individual performance, but in terms of overall match, Mustafa Ali, Lince Dorado, just two thumbs way, way, way up. Yeah, super, super excited for the next uh, next batch of the first rounders. The British gentleman, or not gentleman, the British badass, Zack Sabre Jr. is coming up. I believe Kendrick's in the next one, and... Uh, is, is Rich Swan? And then I don't think maybe he is. there's only two more episodes. That oh, the dude with the the glasses on his hair. The, he has the two. Oh, he's got the two glasses. Yeah, I Anthony Bennett. I think his name is. Maybe. I think I can't remember. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, hey, we'll find out next week. What's it the Zack Saber Jr. has on his t-shirts? That's Osprey. That's not. Oh, I, 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 uh, Yeah, but all those Brits look the same to me. <laughs> Nationalist. <laughs> um... <laughs> I know, uh, but Osprey's is, it's a uh, pip pip cheerio motherfucker. Pip pip cheerio motherfucker. I do love Will Osprey. I hate that Osprey's not in this, but he works for New Japan, so. He's too cool for this, I don't know. 
I love if he and Ricochet were in it. That would have been amazing. <laughs> oh. That match would have gone the 20 minutes. Or and they wanted to get um, King Cuerna. They wanted him for this. Uh, they wanted him to be in it, but he couldn't be because right. of a uh, lucha contract. I would have loved... They, they tried. Yeah. They actually tried. They reached out to, like, Lucha Underground in, to see if they could use some of their talent for it. But Lucha was like, no. No, they're ours. Yeah, which yeah, is like, know. we're a TV show. It's like, well, then let them go fucking wrestle on this show, then. Right, take off the mask and go wrestle on Change the mask. Change the mask. Yeah, or whatever. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I, see, that's the problem. Like, if Pentagon Jr. was wrestling and he took off, you'd know who he was because of his tattoos. I don't know. I mean, he's got the makeup on his lips and everything. Like, just put on some Cesaro sleeves. That's true. Have him in, like, a bodysuit, like, old school, like, uh, Psychosis or Rey Mysterio <laughs> Jr. He's just in this bodysuit. Yeah. There. Jushin. Oh. God, if only they would have had Jushin Thunder Liger. In <laughs> oh. Oh. Very Power Ranger-esque. Hmm. I never put two and two together on that. Hmm. Yeah, that's a whole other. That's episode. all. That's a story for another time. <laughs> but that ends us up for this week. Let us know what you guys think. Well, to recap real quick, oh, our yeah. winners moving on from this episode this week of the Cruiserweight Classic first round: Tajiri, T.J. Perkins, Lindsay Dorado, and Akira Tozawa. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. If you <laughs> like the video, give us that big ol' thumbs up, Fallout Boy style. Subscribe. Not yeah, please, Batista style. Please don't give me a Bautista. Um, <laughs> yeah, subscribe, share the video. Why are we doing Kanas? I'm uh, Tajiri. I'm like oh, I'm, okay. I'm celebrating Tajiri moving on by practicing the ancient Japanese art of karate. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I would do like some Lucha Libre like Lince, but I can't really. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to break our necks. <laughs> Although, you imagine how many views that would get? Woo! <laughs> Dumb fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb fucks talking about wrestling that kill selves. <laughs> and then break their necks on couch. Uh, anyway, guys, thanks for always watching. As we always say here on Tandem Phantom, if you're going to be a fan... Bring a friend. Oh, wait, I oh, forgot. Oh, oh. One last thing that we completely forgot to mention. We got to we gotta go and uh, do some, uh, some good <laughs> lucha things. God, God damn it. Woo!